we're walking towards Castleton, the wind is in our face. Got an interesting view of the ruined castle, Peveril Castle, and then to the left of it, an enormous, what well, looks like cement works. We're in Castleton now, a lovely little village. It's um, an old grey village, but very full of people who are walking or going caving. We just stepped off the street into the grounds of Peveril Castle, but it's so built so steeply that it was quite interesting as we came in, all modern with the English heritage um, place. When you come up steps, again it's modern, telling you about the history, and through the door you come and you see these tree roots and the castle up there, and it's really quite um, magical. So the castle anyway was built um, after William the Conqueror and really it was um, William Peveril held it and there were lots of hunting grounds around here not just forest but open scrubland so that was the most important reason for having the castle to the keeper of the forests and the hunting and it had various um, a bit of a checkered history throughout the ages and um, the son of William Peveril kept choosing the wrong side so the castle left the Peveril family this was a hundred years or so later and um, went into the crown and then it was often used as um, a property of the Queen uh, but by the time of Elizabeth I when she did um, an inventory of all the castles of her land she decided that most of them needed keeping up, you know, repairs and things, but two didn't. And one of them that didn't was Peveril. It was too far gone to be repaired. But what we see mainly is the keep. The, and that's the thing that you can see from far and wide, the, the, the keep. Um, and so we're going to see that now, though we can't get inside. Presumably they've got to do some repairs to it again. Peveril Castle is built in such a commanding position looking over the Hope Valley and it's built on the top of the Peak Cavern and it's called the Forest of the Peak or the Castle of the Peak and so it's a really impregnable uh, position from that point of view. The higher we climb the more and more vistas are opening out beneath us and around us so it's quite exciting. We can see now how the village of Castleton was laid out in a grid pattern um, after the Normans built the castle because that's how they, they did these things. At last we've reached the top, We're just going through the kissing gate into the, into the castle. So it's been a lovely walk up but it certainly set the heart rate going. Valley is the boundary between two distinct um, geological areas. So to the north is the Dark Peak, which is millstone grit, and here is the White Peak, which is limestone, and that's why there are so many caves in the area. I don't know what, and so the castle is built above a cave. This is a guard robe or a toilet, 
built in the 13th century where there would have been a stone, um, a wooden seat with a, a central hole and from there the waste went right down into Peak Cavern. We saw a little harebell growing up on Mam Tor, just one little clump and here we can see one coming out of the castle walls. It's really quite incredible that it's just sprung, it's just managed to get a holding here in the castle walls. We've been able to climb the staircase to the keep but at the moment people are not allowed inside. However the view from here across to the limestone hills is tremendous and also we're sheltered from the wind and in the sun but all the time you can see the leaves blowing off the trees, a reminder that autumn's on its way. We're going to walk up a little way up Cavedale, which we were looking down on from the castle. We've come some way along Limestone Way, which at the moment is a wind tunnel, and we've been able to look up to the castle and realise that um, Peak Cavern, where the castle is built over, we we will be walking could be walking over that system of caves. We are walking up to Peak Cavern Gorge. It's one of the most impressive cave entrances in Britain. It's a limestone cliff and was once a barrier reef, like the barrier reefs in Australia. And very unusually, mallard ducks nest on the rocky outcrops and sometimes their ducklings fall. This is Peak Cavern also known as the Devil's Arse and it is the largest natural cave entrance in the British Isles and for over 400 years there was a, a community which lived and worked in the entrance chamber where they made ropes for the local lead mines. As we go deeper into the cavern 
the stoop to go through Lumbago Walk into the orchestral gallery and the rope makers as well as making rope also we learn that the um, the people to make extra money wanted to interest the tourists that were coming have been coming into this cave for over 400 years and children of, of the rope makers would go into a, a high gallery where they would frighten the tourists <laughs> and we also learn about why it's called the devil's ass a rude name because we, we learn that the water is coming up from below ground and with the rush of the air and everything it sound, gurgles and and makes all sorts of rude noises and that's why for, for years and years that's what it's been called. When, when we entered the cavern it was cold but not that cold but as we went along it suddenly the temperature dropped a couple of degrees and that was because then we were in the mine which had been hollowed out but all all beforehand was a natural cavern and a natural entrance and it's most impressive and coming out of the cavern and you see the beautiful trees and the green it, it was really quite inspiring.